great to be here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, thank you all for making it. So I'm Mick, and this is Stelios, we're the co-founders of Geyser. And Geyser is a Lightning Native um, Bitcoin crowdfunding platform, mainly for, for creators. And uh, yeah, we'll, today we'll be talking a little bit about what we're building and uh, our plans going forward. So first of all, let's talk about the, the pain points, right? So what are, well, actually, taking a step back and looking at where we are today, um, one thing that I think is what really triggered us and motivated us to, to get into and to, and to build out Geyser is the fact that there's so many builders. There's so many people that are either building open source software or there's even a lot of educators out there putting incredible content. And um, not only that, but there's even uh, filmmakers, book writers, uh, game developers, basically anyone who has a particular passion uh, somehow tends to be bringing that passion together with Bitcoin. Uh, we see here uh, a lot of familiar faces, and so I can tell that's, that's the case. So although we see a lot of this, this movement, we often found that it's been, um, by talking to a lot of the, the, these builders and creatives um, and creators, we, we kind of noticed that, that it's kind of hard to reach um, engage and uh, fundraise for them. So it's kind of hard for them to reach and, and engage their community. And it turns out that existing solutions out there um, either just don't enable monetization natively. Like if you think about social media, like Twitter, Facebook, they're, they're not natively integrated into value. They're not integrated into money. Uh, while if you think about other solutions that are about crowdfunding uh, in the traditional space of the internet, they really only operate in 30 countries. So Kickstarter, Indiegogo, they only operate in 30 countries. That's, that's because of the, the monetary network is uh, disconnected uh, from the rest of the world. It's very much a legacy system. And it's because of that, because of regulations and other things. And um, it also enables uh, censorship. These platforms uh, do a lot of censorship. And also, there's a lot of friction in payments. So uh, we'll talk a lot about some of these, these pain points. So what we devise is a, is a solution uh, that we call, um, well, it's Geyser. And uh, it's really a place for creators to launch their project ideas. Uh, it's a place where they can actually also keep up to date their community with, uh, with um, what we call entries, which are like publishing content. Um, they can also apply for grants that we release every, every few months. While it is also a place for contributors to discover new projects, discover what's going on in the Bitcoin space, uh, contribute to uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem by supporting these initiatives and also gain uh, rewards and badges and other types of uh, uh, rewards or, and uh, recognition, basically. So this is the, the bit of an intro. So but going forward, our, our, key, um, our key topic, uh, kind of points of discussion will be really t talking about the, our users, like who, who's using Geyser and what does it tell us about the state of adoption. Uh, we'll then talk a little bit about what problems we're trying to solve here at a high level and then look into what's, what's next, really. Like, how do we onboard the world um, onto Bitcoin? So first of all, let's talk a bit, little bit about Geyser. So this is a little bit of stats um, uh, about specifically contributors, right? So these are people that are spending their Bitcoin uh, on other projects. And when we first started Geyser, we said, who the hell is going to spend their Bitcoin? Everyone's just hodling Bitcoin. Um, but... Um, what well, we realized that actually people, Bitcoiners, are willing to spend their Bitcoin on worthy causes, on things that actually uh, support the spread of, 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 the, of, of the network. Um, so just to give you some, some numbers here, we had around more than 1,000 individual contributors uh, in the last uh, five, six months, and uh, over one Bitcoin being, con uh, being, uh, being, being um, contributed in just the last month. So these are some, uh, you know, considering the fact that we just launched uh, a month and something ago um, in an open, with our open platform. These are some pretty good numbers. So what, uh, when looking at the, the, the creators, um, the creators of, of these projects, one of the key categories of creators that we've noticed are what we call educators. These are people that are writing books, you know, uh, like we have Bitcoin Kids, is a guy in Africa uh, doing a Bitcoin book uh, teach for kids that explains uh, Bitcoin to kids. We also have, you know, people that are like more online social content creators, like the Crypto Couple, the Bitcoin 60 Seconds, publishing incredible content on YouTube, getting millions of views. Um, and then we also have people like uh, 
Paco de la India run the Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin for Fairness that are going out on the ground and, and spreading Bitcoin uh, knowledge and uh, 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 insights. And then we have more like um, uh, kind of academic, uh, kind of rigorous kind of uh, courses developed by Bitcoin Academy. So there's really quite a lot of breadth in the type of projects that are being created. And these reflect around 35% of all the projects that are on Geyser at the moment. Um, and they receive around 36% of the overall contribution amount. So um, there's quite a lot of energy uh, being, being funneled toward this, uh, this type of use case. And just to focus in on, on one particular one uh, that I want to, to kind of highlight is Paco de la India, run with Bitcoin, is doing incredible work. And by the way, this is a QR code that allows you to support uh, Paco like directly just from here. You don't even have to go to his page to support him. And um, this is a, uh, yeah, basically you can pay using any of these uh, LNURL wallets. Um, and yeah, Paco's doing great work kind of on the ground, um, uh, talking to people in Africa and now in South America, um, um, doing meetups, um, connecting with the local communities, and also getting a sense of where we are in the state of adoption today. Um, the, the second category of users that we're seeing on Geyser are the, what we call, cre uh, uh, creatives or people that are building culture on Bitcoin. Um, so as you can see, this is kind of like really building on the social stack of, of Bitcoin, the kind of upper layers. And what you see here is that uh, a bit less than a third of projects uh, feature this type of, 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 of themes, uh, but they get 60% of the overall contributions. So this, is, this is really like really insightful in the sense of people are really willing to support uh, Bitcoin kind of culture initiatives like and just to give you a few examples we have quite a few documentaries like trust um, the fight for the US dollar with um, uh, uh, Pierre Corbin we have Bitcoin racing team that we'll talk a little bit more about in a second we even have uh, video games and uh, uh, Bitcoin card games for collectors um, and uh, last but not least, we even have between two ASICs which are kind of satirical comedy uh, out about Bitcoin so Bitcoin is our seem to be particularly interested in, in, in kind of cultivating the culture uh, around Bitcoin. And that amount of, of engagement and uh, value transfer says a lot. And just to look at one specific of these projects, Bitcoin Racing, uh, again, feel free to, f to fund them directly from here. Uh, but they are doing great work, just, uh, and their idea is bringing their passion with racing and the, the passion with, um, with Bitcoin together. Um, and by you know putting a Bitcoin sticker on their car and in, the, in their racing cars, um, and by um, leveraging their community uh, through sponsorship kind of deals, they really like they really kind of got the entire community around them. They had more than 300 individual contributions and uh, are really kind of pushing culture in Bitcoin pretty pretty amazingly. Um, I think more than any other project, really leveraging the imagination here of the community. Right, and then the, the third uh, other group is uh, what we call the builders, and uh, quite, a, quite a lot of builders using Geyser. Um, sometimes they're open source software initiatives, sometimes there's more private sector type of, um, type of projects, uh, as in um, actual companies that are selling products or their, their products before they're actually out in a way to sort of um, pre-sell the product before they're actually launched. Um, and um, interestingly enough, <laughs> this, they tend to be getting a little bit less contributions. So we're still trying to understand why that's the case, but it does seem that Bitcoiners are just uh, wanna give uh, their, their sats to valuable initiatives uh, that are kind of spreading adoption rather than necessarily um, spreading towards a particular um, kind of private uh, 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 kind of projects. Although I must mention that open source project like BDC Map that I'm gonna get to now, are getting quite a lot more contributions. So BTC Map is another example. Feel free to <laughs> donate away. And they, uh, their idea is to essentially bring Bitcoin, put Bitcoin on the map. So they're taking all the, uh, all the different merchant, uh, merchants that are accepting Bitcoin and um, kind of plugging them in this kind of a Google Maps application that is really growing really rapidly. So we're sort of helping them out by, through donations. And they're you know, using the community, again, through rewards and badges to uh, funnel funds over this uh, open source initiative. So we talked a little bit about the users. Um, I just want to take a little step back and kind of have a uh, high level view of, uh, of where we are um, in terms of like 
wh wh why guys and what are the high level problems we're trying to solve. Um, so if you think about it, we mentioned uh, earlier the idea that it's hard for creators globally to reach, engage, and fundraise from their communities. And we really have this strong belief that the reason for that is that money is not natively plugged in into, uh, in, uh, into the internet, into the current, in the traditional platforms of today. So if you think about Web2 platforms, uh, if you think about like, the social network type platforms, there's just no value exchange on them whatsoever. It's just using the internet, but no, there's no like, value transfer in it. And when you look at uh, the GoFundMes, the Indiegogos, and the Kickstarters that do integrate uh, monies, they do so just via the APIs, uh, which, um, but it, not within a native uh, a value transfer protocol. Um, and that leads to like, no global reach, right? As I said before, they're only available in like, 30 countries. Uh, there's also a lot of censorship. There's no interoperability. And there's a really, really massive amount of friction in the payment experience online. So this is a bit like uh, uh, what it looks like. And um, what it tells you, first of all, is that uh, the internet, like TCP IP, needs needed applications like Twitter, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, to bring the properties of the internet, which was free and borderless information across to the world, right? So the internet needed them. We didn't go tell people, oh, just use TCP IP, no, <laughs> we told them use WhatsApp, use Twitter, use, right? And when it came to the, the value transfer, there was sort of these, these platforms like Stripe and PayPal that tried to kind of uh, digitize the sort of legacy financial system. But with, with a very uh, you know, limited success and um, kind of closed properties of money. So when you look at Bitcoin, like where, what, 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 is, what does it add? What you get to is, Essentially, the idea that you get these, all these applications that are building on top of in, the internet and on top of Bitcoin that uh, leverage sort of uh, the, the, all the properties of Bitcoin that we talked about uh, earlier. And um, just like we said, so essentially what you get to here is this information transfer protocol of the internet and this value transfer protocol that together, coupled together, have the potential to really disrupt how money and how, well, how applications functions, how society functions, and also how uh, value and monetization happens on the web. So you're getting all these application layer platforms currently on Lightning, including you know, Fountain, Stacker News, uh, Starbacker, we heard, we heard speak before, um, and also Geyser that uh, make like, internet native payments possible, which leads to some really interesting, interesting things. So going back to the properties of Bitcoin, we talked about borderlessness, censorship resistance, interoperability, and instant micropayments. So what does that mean for Geyser? So what we've noticed is that by leveraging as an application and build on top of Bitcoin these properties, we get some interesting things, right? So when you look at borderlessness, 30% of our current projects reside outside of the crowdfunded areas, right? So these are people in Africa, in South America. And this is also, by the way, with zero dollars spent in marketing. So there's a lot for us to still to be done. And I think we can get that 30% up to 90% uh, also very soon. We also are interoperable, meaning that 20% of all our funding transactions come from outside the platform. People are funding via lightning addresses. They are funding via these QR codes that I showed you. Uh, they're funding through all these different mediums. And that's because we all use this, this uh, open network that is interoperable and uh, doesn't require people to come to our platform. <clears throat> and, um, and yeah, in terms of instant micro payments, what that allows is just a m much more frictionless experience in terms of payments. So we're seeing 6% of funders over visitors. That's like two or three times um, higher than traditional crowdfunding platforms that are usually around 2%. So again, the fact that we're using this uh, um, internet native money, this, uh, this open uh, value transfer protocol, makes it so that it's just so much more easy to, to pay uh, and um, uh, people are much more likely to, to do so than in the traditional uh, platforms. And lastly, there's the incredibly powerful idea that we are not in control of people's funds, right? We just transfer them along and Sedos will talk a little bit more about this, but uh, essentially, um, 
we are we are not able to to, to freeze uh, the funds. We just transfer them to the to the end users' wallets. So yeah, so this is the next section talking about like what are the challenges to onboarding more more people into this into this platform into Bitcoin, and um, essentially the big one being the big challenge being the challenge of getting project creators to receive the funds. Yeah. Thank you, Mick. So. To recap sort of uh, some of the points Mick uh, just made, the problem, the main problem that uh, we're seeing is that current crowdfunding platforms are using legacy financial tools. And because of that, the, it introduces just a lot of friction to the payment. They're not borderless, they're limited in the number of countries that they can reach to, and they have the power to seize uh, funds and to, or to freeze funds. And the solution to that problem is Bitcoin and Lightning. That's what we're seeing. So the question then is, if we're solving a real problem using a real solution, why are we not seeing uh, a million users using Geyser already, right? Because we know there's a lot of creators out there that want to get funded. And the answer to that is sort of hinted already on this slide. Our main challenge is onboarding people onto Lightning. Sometimes creators um, that reach out to us might not even have used Lightning before. They might not know what it is, but they see the power of it. So the question is, how do we make it usable to all of those people that are uh, not familiar with it just yet? And looking just at our, our current user base, um, as Mick outlined previously, we see some sort of three different categories of people using Geyser right now. We have the builders, the educators, and the creatives. And something that became pretty clear as we did user research and, and asked questions to these, these different categories is that different users have different needs and different expectations. Um, and you see at the bottom here, we, we sort of uh, put it in terms of ease of use or, or self-sovereignty. It's not that binary, but it gives sort of a good high-level overview of what especially creatives want to focus on when they come on Geyser. They don't want to be managing liquidity. They don't want to be running their own node. Um, they're not necessarily interested in the technical aspect of it. They just want to be able to raise some funds to do what they love and to continue doing uh, their creative work. So that's kind of the opposite of what we're doing right now with Geyser because everyone that is using the, pa the platform has to run their own node. And there's some great solutions out there to do that, including Voltage that simplifies the whole process. But still, uh, it is a pretty active thing to do. It's time consuming. It can be costly when you want to manage your liquidity, if you purchase your liquidity. Um, and there is a UX challenge that is introduced both for a creator of the project, but also uh, for anyone that might have used Geyser already. You might have noticed that sometimes payments don't go through. And that is exactly because liquidity is challenging. It is something that it can be difficult to manage. Now, from a user perspective, they do get full self-sovereignty, full, self, uh, full control over their funds. And so there is a lot of power in that. And for certain people, it is definitely very useful to have. And so the option to run your node will always be on Geyser. Um, and from our perspective as a business, it's great from a regulatory standpoint. We do, not have, um, we, we do not custody the funds, and therefore everything becomes much more simple. If we go so, sort of on the other side of the spectrum, it would be in-house custody. That would be um, us custodying all the customer funds, just creating accounts in a database, managing perhaps one or two different Lightning nodes. Um, super easy onboarding. There's really, it's just a sign up to an account. And uh, from a business perspective, we get full flexibility, full control over the funds. And so the types of features we can push out um, become much more easy, easier to manage than if you're dealing with Lightning directly. Something popped up. Now, the downside of that, the downside, the downside of that is the regulatory risk uh, that is introduced. There's a lot more work that needs to go into custodying those funds, and uh, there is the risk of loss of funds. Uh, we've seen recently custodying user funds um, is a, it can be a challenge, right? And it can be costly as well. And then perhaps most importantly, it introduces a censorship. Uh, risk for the users because now we're in a position to actually freeze the funds 
and we're basically just repeating um, what exists out there already. What we get in the middle here is trying to outsource this regulatory burden, this risk, to third-party custodians that have specialized in this exact service. So that is their business, that, that's what they do uh, for a living, and it takes away the regulatory burden for us. Uh, there's no lightning infrastructure, and from the user perspective, the onboarding is still just as smooth as if you were doing in-house custody. There are some big downsides with that as well, though. And that is the third party risk that we introduce to the user. When they want to use um, one of those third party custodians, they will have to trust that custodian. And if we choose that custodian for them, uh, they don't have a choice to actually go for the custodian that they themselves trust for whatever reason that might be. We're imposing that onto them. And similarly, um, they're all API based. They're not native to, to Lightning. So when we introduce one of those custodians, we have to commit to one of them. We have to use either maybe Zebedee, Albi, uh, Wallet of Satoshi, and then serve all of our users with those APIs. So how do we solve that? H how can we try to solve some of those downsides while still keeping the great user experience and, and addressing some of the needs of one part of our user base? The solution we've thought uh, to, to introduce here is making use of Lightning addresses. And Lightning Addresses is a, is a cool little protocol that has been introduced into Lightning that uh, looks exactly like an email address and to which you can resolve uh, Lightning payments. And what we do is that we will wrap all these third-party custodians that offer their own Lightning address. So I'll show more examples on the next slide, but you have Zebedee at, uh, uh, or username at zebedee.com or albi.com or wallet of Satoshi. And, um, by doing that, we're actually wrapping all of the APIs and we're letting the user that already has a wallet, maybe they already have a ZBD wallet, they already have an Albi wallet, they already have a wallet of Satoshi wallet, and they can connect that to their campaign. So we're not introducing an additional third party risk. They're, they have made a choice already to use a custodian wallet for their own reasons, and now we're giving them the option to connect that to their project. Um, and from our perspective, it's great as well. We don't have to support any one particular API. We're actually, by doing so, supporting all of the services out there um, that have introduced Lightning addresses into their service. And that's exactly what we're showing here on this slide. Um, these are just some of the examples of Lightning wallets that currently have implemented uh, Lightning addresses. And this is all native uh, to Lightning. So it, it's a protocol that we introduce once, we do the effort once, and then it's available to all of the users of all of those wallets that all have their own network effects, they all have their own um, growth trajectories, and the list is growing. Lightning addresses are a protocol that is gaining more and more popularity, and therefore with every new wallet that comes out, we get more users as well that uh, can be served on, on Lightning. So what that looks like then on the platform is a very simple onboarding flow, a very simple creation flow, where instead of having to enter all of the connection details of your node, you're actually just entering your email-like lightning address. As easy as signing up for an account in any other sort of um, platform. Some key points is that, of course, it's very easy to use, the onboard is amazing, um, and Geyser remains non-custodial we preserve that property of not being able to freeze the user funds. We remain censorship resistant, uh, which is truly, truly important. So to start wrapping it up, um, let's enable the growth of creator ecosystem together through Bitcoin. There is a path to hyper-Bitcoinization that we're all trying to accelerate. And on one hand, there is some amazing builders, amazing Bitcoin creators, that want to push their idea forward but require some funding. And on the other side, there's Bitcoiners, just like yourselves, um, that want to see the Bitcoin adoption grow and grow faster. And one way that you can do that is by supporting those incredible creators. We are very open to feedback. We want to hear any pain point that you have on, on the platform, using the platform from the contributor side, from the creator side, so please, come talk to us uh, if you've 
had the chance to, to try it out and, and want to give us some feedback. And uh, you might see here a, a QR code. We're actually raising funds uh, together with Lightning Ventures. And you can invest in Geyser itself, the Geyser project itself, uh, with as low as $1,000. So feel free to, to scan this if you're interested. Also feel free to reach out to us on Twitter or, or by email or come talk to us after this. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there's any question, if not, uh, vamos. Hello. Uh, how do you select the projects that are published on the platform? So we used to uh, do a bit of uh, a bit of kind of curation, but now since the last the past few weeks, Geyser is open. So it's an open platform where anyone can create a, a project. All we ask for you from you is to log in via Twitter, uh, and so there'll be other options like email too. But just that's the only kind of filtering mechanism. Mechanism is you need to log in with Twitter, um, and uh, bring in your own node, or very soon as you saw, use a Lightning address. What size funding has uh, guys have been able to raise and what kind of equity do, do they usually take for the funding? Right, yeah, so we are around 65, 70% of the, of the full raise. Uh, we, are, we have a $5 million uh, valuation. So for a startup, very, very kind of humble, uh, humble and um, starting low, but um, and we are the sort of the pre-seed uh, pre stage currently. Uh, and yeah, you can, we can still have, so open to, you know, uh, really, Many different figures we can we can chat later as well if you, if you like, um, but yeah, quite uh, from 1,000 as little as that to uh, probably hundreds of thousands as well. We're looking to scale and to keep keep developing the the team and um, have a runway of around one year and a half or so because this is gonna take this is gonna be a long journey. We have to you know sit down and, and have and plan long term basically. So, yeah. hello. Yeah. I missed half the, the uh, presentation, so I might ask questions that you already replied no to. No worries. Okay. So from uh, what I understand and what I know about Gazer is that um, we can contribute or donate to creators. Like, do you have um, or do you plan on adding a way to invest directly? Because right now, just donations, and we don't expect anything from it. But do, do, you, like, do you have any ideas or plans? of making Bitcoiners invest in other Bitcoiners or Bitcoin startups or whatever it is and expect some type of return? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's a great question. We, uh, so currently, the way that Gazer works is, like you said, donation-based and also reward-based, a bit like Kickstarter. So you, can, you do get something back. That's dependent on the creator. So you could get uh, um, something that the, the creator decides, a shirt, exactly. Yeah, it could be like determined by the creator, and it could be a book, it could be really anything. Um, in terms of the, the equity part, that is also you know, kind, of, kind of you know, important and interesting. Um, but we're trying to really focus on, on the reward and, 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 um, uh, and donations, because we think that can really scale globally really, really quickly, while equity is, is often um, tied to like ge ge um, kind of geographical regulations that can tie, tie down, and it's a lot more challenging for that. Um, uh, but we are definitely thinking about that, definitely very interested, but we think there's so much more potential here to start, um, start low with a humble project that you know, can spread like, uh, like rapid wildfire through grassroots movement of people donating. And we think also Bitcoin enables us this amazing property of inflation resistance that basically makes all our bellies full. It's just like through time, you know, our money goes up in value and we can afford through Bitcoin. I think, I think the, the size of the donation economy on Bitcoin will be massively bigger than it exists in fiat because with, with full bellies, people are happy and they're more willing to, to donate to other projects, especially in the Bitcoin space. So I think it's a massive uh, industry that will keep only growing. Um, and um, yeah, but equity is also interesting, but we'll think about that down, down the line. Thank you, you everyone. Can chat in a bit. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, guys. Pleasure.